All right, on your honks. All right. Yep, you got me there. All right, I am now at about 30. Oh, right there that. with you. And there you go, now you're getting away. All right, Spite, let's fire these bikes up. Let's hear these exhausts. Uh, they are already fired up, my friend. They're, they're, they're on, they're ready to go. Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a quiet one today. Man. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. Today, we are comparing flagship electric to flagship electric motorcycle, something we don't really do that often here on the channel. But we've been whooping up on the Zero, and we thought we'd bring the natural competitor, the Livewire. Yeah, Harley Davidson saw our content about the SRS, and they were like, would you like to continue to beat that dead horse? We're pretty sure that the Livewire is going to kick its butt. So we were like, sure, send us the bike, and Let's see how it stacks up. Yeah, we're really excited. Thank you so much to Harley Davidson for lending us this live wire. And a big shout out again to Eurocycle for loaning us the Zero SRS. Click the link below to check out all the inventory they have. They don't just sell electric motorcycles. There's all kinds of great MV Gooses, Ducatis, Triumphs, BMWs. Although nobody should buy a BMW, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just got to get in the punches when I can. So let's talk a little bit about these motorcycles, I think, in terms of specifications. They're both flagship electric bikes, kind of in a sporty nature, but they go about their business a little bit differently, right? Yes, so we've got a whole bunch of numbers. So I'm gonna pull out my phone here so I do not get them wrong. Yeah. Uh, there, there is so much to talk about between these two motorcycles. The first and foremost is obviously we have a lot of fairings here and not a lot of fairings here. This is designed to be a naked motorcycle. Yeah. And we have, this curb weight is actually a lot heavier. This is 568 pounds to 518, which is- Colored me surprised by Harley Davidson being a little heavy. Yeah, I know. I'm How, shocked. What, what a shocker. The only issue with that is that this also has a slightly less powerful motor in it. So we do have a 15.5 kilowatt hour battery in here to a 14.4. Okay, but a bigger this, battery, more range, ostensibly. Ostensibly, this motor is only putting down 100 horsepower and 84 foot-pounds of torque to that motorcycle's 110 and 140 foot-pounds of torque. Now, I would like to point out, those are Disneyland numbers. Total Disneyland numbers, as the boys over at Brock's would say. Uh, that does not feel like 140, and we're actually gonna drag race these bikes today and see what's what. Yeah, because there's a big, big difference in the way that these bikes feel on the road, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about one thing that makes this so cool but before we get there the big thing on both of these bikes is range range is one of those considerations that everybody's worried about on these motorcycles so i wanted to start out with those specs on the live wire we have 146 miles in the city now that is going to vary a lot depending on your riding style and the mode that you select mm -hmm. this bike however has 156 so a slightly longer range and if you go with the premium edition which this is not you'll see about 164-ish miles. Combined, this is getting 95 to this bike's 103, and then highway, 70 and 77. Now, I would like to say, we real world tested a Zero just like this in 2020, I believe, or maybe it was early 2021, to see what the range was, and the range was vastly different than the numbers quoted. In normal around town riding, and sport mode, and going on the highway a little bit, of very mixed conditions riding, I think I could only get about like 70-ish miles out of it. Yeah, we clicked the key on on that this morning, and it said 80, this one says 135. So, yeah. admittedly, we have not ridden this one particularly long, so its calculations might be a little bit off. We are going to do, in a later video, a total range test. We're going to run both of these motorcycles dry in the exact same conditions, riding them the exact same, and see which one lasts longer. Mm -hmm. Now, from empty, this bike is going to take four and a half hours to charge, given the charger that you have in the motorcycle, and that's on your normal wall socket. The charger is a little bit fancier on this. Yeah. This one is going to take 11 hours on your standard voltage to go from empty to full. However, if you do get to level two, you can go from zero to 100% in an hour on this thing. Yeah. That thing also quite fast on level two. Yeah. So really the name of the game with electric bikes is to get a level two charger. 
So Spide, I'm seeing these bikes are equipped kind of similarly. I'm seeing show of suspension, upgraded brakes. Talk me through some of the features on both of these bikes. Right, so there's a lot going on under the skin with both of these motorcycles. We've talked a lot about the Cypher Store. It's hard to get through this segment without talking about it. This motorcycle has your sport, canyon, rain, road, eco modes. It's got a ton of rider modes in there. This one, also a ton of rider modes, but the Harley, fully and it's yes it's a live wire i'm going to keep calling it a harley because it's got the badging everywhere uh this it is a separate company but it is a separate company we got it from our harley guys yeah so it's kind of the same thing <laughs> so this thing has fully customizable ride modes you've got your leaf mode which is your eco mode road rain sport and then you have three separate completely buildable ride modes where you can select your regen braking your uh, engine mapping throttle response you cannot do that on this motorcycle however you can go in and buy some extra features for this like navigation on screen which can be kind of cool you mm -hmm. can get yourself heated grips which this motorcycle does not have from what i'm seeing and then this is also got a bunch of other little things like faster charge time locked away it is worth pointing out that on the harley you get everything with the purchase price of this bike Yep. Which is part of the reason why it is more expensive at around $22,700 base mm -hmm. with a full price tag out the door with all of the like carbon fiber farkles and stuff of $26,500. So we are talking flagship money for this motorcycle and that is not encountering any of the rebates and stuff. You know, Spite, that's Ducati Street Fighter V4S money. That is V4S money. I wonder why I know that so intimately. <laughs> However, we cannot leave the price conversation no. without talking again about the Zero. So, this is the base model SRS. $20,595. The premium adds another two grand, $2,100, to $22,695. If you want to get yourself a you know extra charge pack or whatever from the factory, you're looking at twenty four nine nine five. Then you have about six thousand dollars worth of crap that you can buy in these cipher stores. So this Very bike cart with this one, yeah. This bike comes in less expensive. It leaves more expensive. This yeah. thing, you're done one, and it is worth pointing out that all the extra shit you can buy, it's carbon fiber farkles and Rizoma parts. Yeah, that is very true. Kind of going over the specs and features now, I think there's just one thing left to do, and that's to take them out for a spin. All right, folks, we're out here on the road with the live wire and the Zero. First thing we're going to do is swing a leg over these bikes, let you know how they feel. Uh, Spite, I'm going to swing a leg over the Zero. You can swing a leg over the live wire, and we'll tell each other how they feel. Man, you feel a lot of weight on this bike. It's, yeah. it's a little heavy getting it off the kickstand, for sure. I feel like the reach of the bars on the Zero is very, like, absolute bog standard naked sport bike thing. I feel like my rider triangle is exactly what I would expect, you know? How does the live wire feel? There's a lot more reach to the bars on this motorcycle. It's, it's a, my arms are basically perfectly straight, um, and the peg height is a little bit, it's a little bit higher than I would anticipate for a normal naked bike. Mm -hmm. So the rider triangle is a bit odd, and the seat is pretty narrow yeah. on this. It's like a little two before plank. And obviously, since these are electric bikes, there's no gas right here. This bike has a frunk. That bike doesn't have a frunk, but I noticed the gas, gas tank shape on that one's a little narrow as well, too. Yeah, very Sportster-esque. Yeah. Yeah, it does have a Sportster vibe to it. Go ahead and uh, jump on the live wire there. We'll compare notes a little bit. Oh, man, you instantly feel a <laughs> massive weight difference. Yeah, this thing has a, it feels like it just has like a lead brick at the bottom. And it's just like, <laughs> you know, real, very Harley-esque in that way, you know? Very harley -esque. almost like that company made this bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this feels so light and it's, the seat is more comfortable. The reach of the bars is so normal. Yeah. It just feels like your tip of the bell curve motorcycle ergonomics package. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's see how they do on the twisty road. It's got to go through its whole boot cycle, and then i got to wait for the green circle, which, there it is, now I can go. All right. I am in the custom A mode that you have set up for this motorcycle, uh, which you want to tell the folks at home what that is. Yeah, so custom A mode is basically sport mode, but with more throttle response. 
Uh, I essentially just maxed out the throttle response, gave us 80% uh, regenerative braking and, you know, full power. So it's, it's basically, you know, all go, no quit. Love it. And we've got the zero in Canyon mode. Is that right? I had it in sport mode because I was trying to feel the difference, but let me pop it in Canyon because I feel like that one has more regenerative braking going on. So I want to get it as even as possible. Yeah, You're in Canyon mode. Now, this live wire, I already can tell something funky about it, is that it's providing me a lot of what the Harley guys told me is uh, haptic feedback. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that they've done with that motorcycle to fool the mind into thinking that it's alive and on is it has a motor that's vibrating throughout the whole bike. So it literally is a two-wheeled vibrator. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it vibrates at a stop with this little heartbeat feel and under heavy braking, it also vibrates to mimic like the feel of engine braking. Yeah, let me go ahead and just stab the front brakes and yep, I get a little sensation of kind of a, a little buzz through the handlebars, which is funky. And I notice that when you're sitting at a stoplight, it gives you a little heartbeat feeling, which is really cool too. Yeah. And <laughs> this bike, it does not do that. Nope. The Zero definitely feels a little more toy-like in that way. And I gotta say, I am still pleasantly surprised by the live wire. We rode him in Malibu on some of the best twisty roads on God's green earth, but out here in much more normal Austin, Texas kind of hill country twisties, um, I'm still I'm really liking this bike side to side and powering out of corners. It feels great. It's a lot of fun to ride. How does the Zero feel? I mean, the Zero feels fine. Again, it feels like a 50th percentile motorcycle, like right <laughs> tip of the bell curve. Um, the the steering side to side is, is fine. It's adequate. I got plenty of lean. Um, it's just not the most thrilling ride. You know, side to side, it feels a little bit ponderous, just, just a smidge. Um, just a, it's a bit odd. Uh, and again, there's just nothing going on in this package that really excites me while I'm riding it. I could see that. Yeah, I mean, I, I do get the same feeling from the Zero. It's a little, a little soulless. I mean, you can kind of feel that, you know, there's less motorcyclists involved in the production of that bike than there is on the Harley here. The Harley feels like, you know, real motorcyclists were end to end thinking about this motorcycle. And, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are a bunch of, uh, uh, motorcyclists at zero. I'm sure there's plenty. You can't build a motorcycle without having motorcyclists on the team. But yeah, I think the credit where credit's due, Harley's been making bikes for over a hundred years and you really feel it in the live wire, you know? I also, I don't love the look down out of the cockpit on this bike. Something about the flat fairings and where the mirrors are, it feels like a jet ski to me, you know? <laughs> it's got this, it's got this sort of like jet ski-esque cockpit and I don't say that positively. You know, everybody's right. like, oh, jet skis are a bunch of fun. Drink a bunch of beers and throw your girlfriend off the back of one. <laughs> uh, no, that's not, that's not good in this package. It feels sort of cheap. The plastics rattle a bit. I yeah, it is tough because electric motorcycles, they are so quiet and you feel everything. So if you do have any rattling, you're going to notice it a lot. Um, but continuing over here to carve through some corners with the live wire. And I'm just, I'm really impressed with what this thing does. Um, I'm on the, um, is it Michelin Scorchers? I can't remember. It's some Scorcher tire. Yeah, it's their uh, sporty Scorcher that goes on the live wire. I believe the Sportster Whoa. S is also on that tire. And the Roadster, stock Roadster, I believe is on that Scorcher. I would probably opt in a different uh, set of rubber, but for what it is, it's doing pretty well. And I gotta say, how much torque do they claim this thing makes? 84 foot pounds and 100 horsepower. I believe it. It feels like it. It feels like about 80 something foot pounds of torque. Whereas the Zero, as uh, we'll probably show later in this video, total Disneyland numbers of 140 foot pounds of torque. This, honestly, I've ridden the Zero a lot. I've ridden this bike. This bike feels about as fast, um, but we'll have to see on the drag how they do. Yeah, absolutely. There, there definitely feels like Harley's a little bit more realistic with their numbers there. Um, which I appreciate. You know, everybody's like 140 foot-pounds. Oh man, that thing must be real fast, the Zero. And you're like, 
Well, ride it, man. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel that potent. Yeah. Um, and that's because you have a mathematician being like, oh, well, it can make 140 foot pounds of torque. It doesn't in normal riding though. Yeah. Now we're going to make a whole dedicated video about range on these two bikes. Cause that's a big, big talking point, but I just wanted to get your sense, Spike, uh, what is your battery and range showing right now? So, uh, a little bit of how the sausage gets made. We've already done a lot of squidding in the highways. <laughs> we've, uh, we've done a little bit of extra filming and I'm currently at 56% with 46 miles worth of range left. Wow. Uh, that's that's not good. I've got 65% and 82 miles uh, indicated over here. Um, uh, you know, we did test the Zero SRF and it wasn't very confidence inspiring with its range and it appears that the SRS is proving to be the same. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, we, we were literally just wide open throttling these bikes <laughs> around. Um, yeah, both of them, to be fair, not just one or the other, so. Yeah, no, we, we, we swapped bikes back and forth, which again, you're gonna see in a bit. This is how the sausage gets made. Stuff doesn't always get filmed linearly, but uh, yeah, it's it's not great to just watch this bike's numbers go down. And if I may pontificate for just a moment, I know that the range is artificially gimped so that you pull out your phone, download the patch for extended <laughs> range on yeah. this bike. I mean, that's that's not great. Because I mean, the science just doesn't make sense there. The battery's bigger, it should have more range, but obviously Zero's playing some tricks on you with the whole Cypher Store thing. Yeah, I mean, this is the 14.4 plus, which means that this can go up to 17.4. So it is a bigger battery that just battery on the side says 14.4. The Harley actually in the stock trim has a bigger battery. I believe it's 15.6. So it's got an extra kilowatt hour. But yeah, Twisty Road Report, I, again, the live wire, it's living up to it, just like it did in Malibu. It's a lot of fun to ride. I don't know why, it just feels fun. Uh, powering it out of corners, it feels really natural and really like a motorcycle, you know? It doesn't feel odd or like a simulation. I don't know how the Zero's feeling. I want to I actually swap them right up here, but the live wire feels great. Yeah, the, the Zero has this the throttle's not tuned right it feels like it's perfectly linear you know uh like it's you know okay when the bike is stopped it should be zero zero and when you're at full throttle it should be one one and they draw a straight line between when that's not what power curve curves look like on bikes a little swapsies i'll need the key from you because <clears throat> much like every other modern harley you don't put a key in it you got to have a fob in your pocket all right. All right, in canyon mode. I feel like the seat height on the live wire is taller. Yeah, it I've definitely feels really taller. I've got a really big bend in my legs here. I'm not sure if I love that. Yeah, these ergos are very like R3 almost, like Ninja 400-esque. Mm-hmm. Which is not what I want in a sport bike. <laughs> yeah, the haptics do a lot. <laughs> it's funny, wouldn't, right? You wouldn't imagine it, but they really do. Yeah, no, honestly, we've been swapping back and forth, but holy cow, they feel, the, the speed off the line feels very similar on yeah. these two bikes. Yeah, we can't wait to show you guys the drag footage, um, but yeah, it's, it, there's nothing really between them, and yeah, you're, you know, I really agree with your jet ski uh, interpretation of this motorcycle. It does feel that way. It's got a lot of fairing up in the front. Um, the throttle is just too buttery smooth. It is like a sort of a jet ski for the road. Yeah, the, the live wire feels like, for want of a better term, a real bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm flicking it through here, trying to get a sense for this bike. And I, I feel immediately more at home on the live wire. I don't know why. It feels like it pitches directions quicker. It feels like it goes side to side a little quicker, even though it's heavier. Um, I, yeah, the, the geometry on that bike feels a little more taut. We were mentioning how the frame on that thing is totally different than this trellis frame that the Zero uses, and I think that's a big reason why it feels so different. Yeah, I mean, this is just, it looks like a fully built Twin Spar frame, you know? It just does feel like a more thought out package. This doesn't feel like a 
motorcycle necessarily built for Austin early adopters. It feels like a motorcycle that a motorcyclist could get and enjoy. Yeah, which is, it's what we said in Malibu. And, you know, I've, I've been wanting to make this comparison for so long between the two back to back. And it's exactly how we thought of it, honestly. Um, I was hoping to be pleasantly surprised with the Zero, and I am. The Zero is still a quick electric motorcycle. It is very nicely built, but I, I just think the Harley has a little bit more, you know, a little bit extra going on with it. Mm hmm. A je ne sais quoi, perhaps. A je ne sais quoi. Entering well, the tighter twisties here. I just want to see how it works back to back. We don't have to include it on camera, but. Yeah, I say we've uh, we've we've teased, we've edged the audience long enough. Why don't we give them the highway stuff? Well, let's give them the highways and the drags, because that's what American viewers care about. <laughs> On the highway now with the Zero and the Live Wire after doing some initial testing, and I do have to say, Spite, I do like the fairings and the windscreen here, kind of cruising on the highway. I'm doing about 60 right now. Uh, it is definitely a sport touring kind of vibe, and you know, Zero does sell you the. Uh, SRF, which is the naked version of this one that we've had before, but yeah, this fully fairing is a very pleasant place to sit. How does the live wire feel on the highway? Uh, I will say I do wish I had the zero seat. The zero seat is very comfortable. It is super, super plush. This feels like your very bog standard naked bike, you know? Um, the reach to the bars is a little bit longer because the bike itself is a little bit longer. But it's not an uncomfortable place to sit. You know, it feels it feels like a normal naked motorcycle. One thing we were commenting on is these motorcycles, because they are electric and only have the one moving part, uh, you end up feeling so much more through the tire. And I just feel like every little crack and imperfection, I'm, I'm kind of wondering like, is that if my suspension's doing something weird or if my tires are flat, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, you do get a lot of, uh, you get a lot more feedback out of the road and the vibration that you get, because it's not perfectly buttery smooth, it's very smooth relatively, uh, but it's not like, it's not like you're rolling over glass. It's this very high frequency vibration that you get, and that's the tire just constantly deforming. You get so much feedback out of these bikes. Yeah, you really feel a lot of what's going on at the contact patch. Um, but let's check the passing power here a little bit. I've got mine at about 67 miles per hour. And I'm just gonna go ahead and oh Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a hundred. <laughs> so let me let me do the same thing here. I'm gonna I'm at 70 Yeah, so I do believe that feeling these back-to-back -back, watching you you sort of leapt forward this bike ended up needing to do a little bit more work to see triple digits, which, you know what? I'm totally fine with that on this. It's not, <laughs> it's not a- Come on, Spite, more power is always better. Come on. <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead and say that when you were down to 40 miles left of range. Yeah, I'm already showing 88%. <laughs> I don't know about you, but- <laughs> I'm at 91, so, so far uh -oh. so good for uh -oh. the Harley. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, there you go. That's the difference in the torque. You have so much more torque available. Um, and, you know, I, I'm i feeling pretty good about the general power about both of these bikes on the highway. I don't feel like I'm missing anything, you know? Yeah, I think both provide a really adequate amount of power. I don't think either one you'd be like, oh man, I wish I had a little more torque or a little more top end. I mean, there is no top end. It's just, it's all torque and instant power. But mm -hmm. yeah, both feel very adequate. With the Zero, definitely edging it out. This bike does have a bigger motor and it does, you can tell it just produces a little bit more power. But as we say a lot on the channel, power is not everything, you know? It's, it's not always the be all end all. So we've done twisty roads. We've done the highway. I think now the only thing left to do is uh, be some suburban hooligans and go stoplight to stoplight. You ready? Yeah. All right, on your honks. All right. Yep, you got me there. Yeah. But not by far. Yeah, it wasn't by much. Mm -hmm. I feel like off the line, the live wire is pretty good. Yeah, no, I was right there with you. It's when you, that bike can really start to stretch its legs. It definitely yeah. has more speed in it than the live wire does. 
Yep, it's definitely got a higher top speed. It's really weird, like you get that huge surge of torque when you first let off uh, from the line, right? It's, mm -hmm. It really, really goes off and you're seeing, you know, 20, 40, 60, it's really going fast. Once you reach about 90, 100, it really tapers off. You're not there's really going that much faster, it. yeah. Yeah, there's just nothing left for it. That's why I feel like a, a normal kind of higher spec naked bike, like even like a street triple, like this bike will definitely beat it off the line, but the street triple will pull to at least 140, 150 ish i think well you want to go from like uh 30 roll yeah let's do it all right i'm at 30. all right i am now at about 30. Oh, right there with you. and there you go now you're getting away but you're not walking you know yeah no i wasn't like obliterating you and that's honestly pretty impressive given that the live wire is heavier and you are a heavier rider than I am. So honestly, that's yeah. kind of a tick in the live wires column in my opinion. This bike should really handily defeat that bike. Yeah, no, I'd be interested to see maybe on the way when we're heading back down, we can do another 30 roll and switch bikes and see what it does. Yeah, although, well, we got another red light here. Oh, darn. Oh, <laughs> got a drag race again. You ready? Yeah. I was about to start building up the revs. That's not how this works. Yeah, I mean, the results are pretty, um, pretty indicative, I would say. Uh, it, yeah. We're getting the same result every time we do that. Yeah. And again, I, th I think that's really good for the live wire. It's carting my big ass and it's heavy ass up to speed, but not getting left by a bike that should be leaving it. Yeah. Do you want to swap bikes and see what the results will be? Sure. I think this, uh, whatever this car behind us was, was trying to also race. What is this thing? That's an oh, electric that's, sedan. That's an, ele that's an electric car. Yeah, he was really close to you. I was like, what, what, what was that thing? All right, from 30? From 30. All right. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that feels just as fast as the Zero, even though it has a smaller motor and a bigger weight. Weird. Yeah, I dusted you with that. That was crazy. Yeah, and you were getting farther away. Yeah, let's do from about, about 55. Okay. On this bridge here. You ready? Yep. I'm hanging with you, but you're still ahead. Oh, nope, you're getting ahead from me now. <laughs> yeah, hit the same speed, about 115. Yeah. That's interesting. Maybe Livewire slash Harley is kind of pulling a BMW automobile thing, and they're kind of downplaying the numbers. Or maybe these numbers are just so Disneyland that those are the same, that they're making the same figures, you know? That feels like the exact same amount of torque. Yeah. It, it doesn't, because uh, these, this is supposed to have 40 less foot pounds of torque, right? No, it's supposed to have 60 less foot pounds of no, torque. No, no way, dude. No way. 140, 84. I'm going to, I'm going to whack it from 50. All right. It feels a little less torquey, but the end result is the same. It's pulling just as hard. Yeah. Dude, what is up with zero, man? It's, it's pretty impressive how much how alike the two are yeah even though this has you know all the specs working against it and i have 55 miles of range now <laughs> i still have 96 it says <laughs> i just thought i thought it was that srf that was a bit of a dud but it proves that it's really the zero battery that's kind of a dud yeah all, all points go to the live wire in that situation. Man, that was impressive. Yeah, I really want to see if we can get a little, a, a, like a bit more of like a, from a dig situation. You want to flip back around over there, try another one? Sure. <laughs> We're just, <laughs> we've drag rates like 10 times on 360 at this point. Whenever you're right. ready. You got me on the launch. Oh, I got some wheel spin. 
and I gotta shut it down because I got cars in front of me. But you you got me on the launch. I that that was it just didn't feel as like instant, you know? Well, I'm really impressed with how the Livewire did stoplight to stoplight and drag racing and doing its pulls. Because on paper, you would think that this is going to not win. Yeah. yeah. But, but it clearly... Just, it's either right there or crushing it. <laughs> yeah. Based on rider size. All right, folks, we're back here in the shop. Let's have a quick chat about how both these bikes look. It's a very important part of any motorcycle. So if you attach to it, you get that kind of look back factory and you get off of it. And I personally think the Livewire looks cooler. Yeah, I think the Livewire is sort of abandoning the aesthetic of a traditional motorcycle. You know, they're trying to lean more into the, the future side of things. This is like trying to couch futurism in like old school plastic. Mm -hmm. And it, it looks like, it looks like if you asked an AI to describe a motorcycle. Yeah. You know? Or if you asked an AI to keep iterating on a VFR. Yes. It kind of looks like a VFR in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know, it just doesn't really do much for me in the way of aesthetics. Whereas the Livewire, in a different way, I think like it kind of looks like a Sportster a little bit, has that bit of future look to it. The gas tank shape is a little awkward. It's not a gas tank per se, but this space here is a yep. little awkward. But I think this is a more successful visual package than the Zero over here. But all that to say, I think the Zero is like a four and a half out of 10, and the Livewire is like maybe a six out of 10 in terms of looks. Whereas obviously Abusa is 10 out of 10 in terms of looks, as everyone knows. Yeah, I mean, we're literally staring at its majesty right over there behind cameras. So it's, yeah. it's impressing upon us its looks at all times. Yeah, but let's round out this video. We've learned a lot today. We've confirmed a lot today. Spite, how do you feel about these two motorcycles? I thought it was going to be closer than it was, to be honest. Uh, I was really looking forward to the Zero kind of striking back a little bit, yep. you, know, you know, being like, no, you've been dogging on me so long, I'm going to show you what I've got. And then it just didn't show up today. No. You know? The live wire just, it's got more going on. It's got more personality. And I know the people in the comments are going to be like, oh, you're a Harley simp. Yes, I am. I wear that on my sleeve, but I do genuinely think this is a better package. Yeah, and I will say, even though this is the back half of the video, no one's gonna watch this crap, but nobody paid us to say these things, okay? Harley didn't pay us to say Livewire is good. Zero slash Euro Cycle is not paying us to say anything, even though they were paying us to dog on it. That would be kind of funny. <laughs> I would take that check any day. <laughs> but I agree with Spite. I think the Livewire just, it's a better executed package. You can tell it was built by a company that has over a hundred years of experience doing this. And you know, the spec sheets tell a very different story than what you're gonna see out on the road. If you look at only the spec sheets of these two bikes, you would think the Livewire is much slower than the Zero. And that just wasn't the case with a lot of back-to-back -back drag racing. No. A lot, a gratuitous amount. Yeah, I mean, I'm really impressed with how much the Livewire was able to go up against a bike that should have just annihilated it. Yeah. You know, that 140 foot pounds, man, sure don't feel like it on the road. No. Uh, and the package itself just feels more premium here. Yeah. A lot more going on that just feels better in the hands. This is, mm, doesn't do it for me. Yeah, I think, I'm gonna put it out there, if you've got about $22,000 to spend and you want an electric motorcycle, get the Livewire. It's the one we would choose. It's Absolutely. a really, really sweet motorcycle and I had more fun riding it today than the Zero. Yeah, can't wait to see how much longer this goes in a range test. We still have to do the full-on range test. Yep. Uh, and based on how the numbers were shaken out today, I'm imagining this goes an extra 30 or something miles. Yeah, and that would really be something, especially considering that that is the base model, and this is the base model, and you have to pay all the extras to get all this. But I will say, Splite, at the end of this video, there is a giant elephant looming behind us. Do you, do you know what it is? Is it? Is it a big ICE engine no, with a lot of noise? It's another company called Energica. Oh no, no. Don't even <laughs> don't even bring toaster up. No. Yeah, we have to try an Energica at some point, but for today's video and today's electric bike comparison, the live wire is the winner. So guys, let us know what you think about these two motorcycles. Defend your camp vehemently down below in the comments. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Well, look at you, you've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know, maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.